something went wrong that you had to restart the whole measurement all over again. We didn't want that. So what, what's it, what it does is it, every time you complete a profile, a station, okay, it saves the file up until that point. Okay? So if you then lose communication, when you, go, when you regain your communication, you can open up that file and it will load it up to the last full, full tra uh, station that you've actually <laughs> So in this case, we've got two files in here. One that is got, they've both got the same file name, except the second one has got underscore one. Yeah. Okay, so that is the one that completed the measurement. The one with underscore the one. one. It's, got every, it's got all of the data there. Okay. If we have lost communication on two occasions, okay, it would have gone underscore one, underscore one. Oh. If, okay, and so you always want to take the last one. The last one is the one that has everything in it. So this is our measurement there. Um, if I just go back to our, uh, the moving boat method and just choose, this is. So you see we have sort of higher velocities here, we've got the slow portion in the middle, okay, but then we've got the higher velocities again. So there's probably, I don't know, either a rock upstream or there was vegetation growing upstream in the middle, the channel that was slowing it down in the middle. And if we go to the stationary, we didn't do, the problem with here, we didn't do many verticals, we probably should have done a few more verticals or a few more stations, but we see a similar sort of thing where higher velocities uh, left and right of the channel and in the centre sort of quite low velocity there. Mm -hmm. If I double click on any particular vertical, we can see a bit more information about that. <coughs> okay, so we can see that we've got the transducer depth below the water is in here. Maybe we've made an error on that. So if I, I could change that, I could say put 07. And I can if I just if I just say okay, it will apply that change just to that one station. Obviously, if, if I check apply to all, it applies it to, a, to all. Okay. If for some reason the water depth was not being measured correctly by the instrument, maybe it wasn't detected in the bottom. Uh, maybe there's some just some error, whatever. Yep, we could manually input. So we have on this one. Sorry, what do we have? It is saying that the, the, the depth from the vertical beam is 51 centimeters. From the bot, uh, bottom track depth, it's 53 centimeters. If I put in anything other than zero, I'm going to put in 0.6. I will say OK, and it will change that depth now. Has it done that? So if it's anything other than zero, it uses the value you put in there. I'll put in something a bit more simple to uh, make it more obvious. Okay. So now it's saying, okay, the water depth at that station is 1.2 meters. Okay. So your discharge. So your discharge will have risen. Okay, because it, we're extrapolating from the last good velocity all the way down. For the rest of that, uh, what we want to nearly 70 centimeters. So, for example, they take this out during the heavy flow, heavy flood season. They do this and they get the top five or six cells, whatever. Then they go out with a GPR radar and then put that in. That, that, that changes it. At least you get the top velocity and then yeah. strike it down. That's how you can use this with the GPR. Same idea. Same idea. Exactly the same idea. Yeah, so if it's anything other than zero, it uses the value you put in there. You go back to zero, okay, it uses the, the measurement from the instrument. Um, 
So as you, I, you, I was talking earlier about how we're getting a better mean velocity by using the stationary software. So we've been averaging for 40 samples on each one. We could actually have changed the number of samples that we had on each one out in the field. We chose to stick with 40. You could have changed it to 35. The international standard actually says if it's really slow moving water, you should go up to 100 seconds. Okay, yeah. your slow moving water is more turbulent and to get that mean velocity, you need to average for longer. Okay. So we could have done that out the field. The profile extraction at that time, part, it looks like it's coming back for it yep. is a narrow channel, so that the, the maximum loss is not the same. So maybe we should use the last three points to... Yep. Is that something you would do, or is that... One of the second station. Yeah, you could. There's a, there's a couple of possible reasons why this is coming back on itself. Mm -hmm. One of them could be that the instrument is actually affecting it, okay? The amount that we're, we've put it in. The USGS have done a study on this, and they sort of, they feel that, that there could be something there. The problem is, we've also looked at, um, I say we, we as in Sontec, but also we as in the community have looked at a whole range of other farms, and we don't see it. You know, so maybe it's something like, you know, wind effects on the, on the top, you know, sort of, the wind blowing up the channel um, and slowing the, the surface velocity, you know, down. And they, you know, there's been studies into how far down into the water the actual uh, the wind does have an effect on it you know, by using sort of ADVs or anything like that. Looking coming up from the bottom, they've been they've been checking that. Um, I, and to be honest, nobody's really come up with the answer yet. You know, so I, I couldn't say you you definitely do this or or don't do that because I think anything is open to consideration at the moment. All, all we know is that because of the use of these things, we are seeing that rivers are not as predictable as we thought they were. But in the case of the region in the morning, I think there's no wind effect to... I don't think there's any wind effect this morning. Yeah. No, I don't. <coughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, it could be the boat. You know, there's a... Uh, the boat in the water, maybe, maybe it's not even just so the So people may do as well the measurements correctly now. Yes. Because the, the top part, is the, the, the velocity measurement is affected by the floor. Yep, yeah. it could be, it could, could be. be. And that's, the actual, some of the, uh, you, I showed you yesterday different boats that are in use. Yes. You know, and some of them are like the, the yeah. surf, some of them are like the surfboards. Those ones actually put a lot less, they, they, they rest on the surface of the water. And you just sort of poke the instrument down into the water. Um, they definitely don't disturb the top portion of the water as much. Okay? Does it make a great difference to the discharge? I haven't. I've never really seen a huge difference. You know, if we look at this one, um, I've made a change here. So I'm not, I'm not sure. <coughs> I think I changed that. Oh, no. The, the reason for the change is. Um, Okay, so we have from the stationary method, we have a total discharge of 1.412 cubic meters per second. If I go to the four good measurements that we've got, or the four measurements we want to use from the moving boat method, mm -hmm. so those four there, we have a discharge of 1.445, you know, so about 30 litres difference in 1,400 litres. It's a, it's a very low percentage. Um, I can actually, I can actually just use. So yeah, you are trying to you are trying to expand uh, the transmission depth, the factor, transmission depth, right? Because it changes. You know? Yes. Yeah. But the, the thing I'm saying is, once we once we'd set on the the instruments were set up, the data was all okay. The difference between the two. Methods and we, we sort of said, all right, we've got seven centimeters on that one, seven centimeters on that one. Everything else was the same. The difference between them was 
30 litres. Mm. That equates to 1.3%. Okay. You know, it's, it's really a bit mm. um, Yeah, if you wanted to change the velocity profile extrapolation here, we could go, if we double click on that file, bring up that window again, down in the bottom left is profile extrapolation, and in the same way that we do in River Surveyor, we can do it here. And we can do that though, with stationary, we can do that profile by profile, whereas with the, the moving boat method, you have to do it for the whole measurement. So in the movie boat, yeah, the, the procedure's the same, but with station, we, we do it by station. Whereas with movie boat method, we have to do it for the whole, whole, the whole method. Uh, method. So you have to check which station? Well, I would just, you know, I would, one of the things I would do is look through each one and sort of say, how, does that profile extrapolation look right? Mm -hmm. um, and it's marked it. This one's probably okay. Relative, getting closer to being okay. Those, probably not. You know, this one. You know, so I would probably, in there, I would probably go for the most sick. It's knocked it down by 12 litres. Um, what else? If if the compass alignment, if the compass had not been calibrated properly, and we've not done our, you know, we put the instrument into the middle of the river to start with, and we measured the angle that the boat was at through the cross section. If we'd have got that wrong. we actually changed the discharge quite considerably and you see here these stick plots the reds showing the true velocity and the blue the normalized velocity so because the instrument thinks it is at the wrong angle okay now we're 30 degrees out that's what it was okay it's saying the velocity is coming from a different angle okay for a stationary measurement we do the co uh, to normalize the velocity, you do you, uh, you do the cosine of the angle, multiply the discharge uh, the velocity by the cosine of the angle to normalize it. Okay? And that's a standard hydrometric procedure. And that's reduced, that therefore reduces the downstream velocity, the true downstream velocity, um, normalized downstream velocity, I apologize. And it reduces the discharge. But it so if ever you see in your data a regular occurrence where the, the, the true velocity is always pointing off at an angle, it's quite likely that you've not done a good tagline measurement or your compass is not calibrated very well. Okay? So I, if I just go back to that, uh, put it back to 17 as it was. And we see that what we're seeing there is as, as was. Something else that we have in, the, in this system settings is we have the discharge calculation method can be different. Okay, around the world there are two two main ways of uh, calculating discharge using the stationary method. 
Okay, one is the midpoint method and one is the mean section method. Okay? Um, most of you are using the mean section. Mean section. Okay, mean section. America. Mid-section. <laughs> uses the mid. Mid-section.
And what it is saying is that we see we have uh, amber and red. The international standard says you should never have more than 10% of the total discharge going through any one panel. Which means we need to give more, more stations. More stations. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And probably have more in the middle. Yes, yeah. More in the middle. Okay, so if uh, the, we could just back work this and say actually, well, we know that the instrument has said it is 1.4, so I'm going to change that there to 1.4. Okay, and that will reduce that a little bit on some of those. But if we'd if we'd have put that in before we started the measurement, okay, as we were doing each panel. This was it was shown up, okay. and you say, "Oh, okay, I need to put one closer." Oh. Okay. So that that would had it done the moving boat method, we knew roughly what to expect. We could have put that in, and we could immediately have uh, Even seen that. Even though the, the, the ratio of the total dispatch to power fifteen percent, the comparison between the moving boat. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. It's, yeah. So is it it's just it's. That all comes down to reducing the uncertainty of the measurement. Okay, so with this, you know, we've we've ended up with a very good measurement, but the uncertainty is actually quite high. The accuracy of the measurement is good, but the uncertainty is, and this the uncertainty is based on the international standards um, way of calculating uncertainty from measurement of discharge. In their uh, a document called the the, the HUG HUG Hydrometric Uncertainty Guidance document. Okay. So, uh, if I so control T again, if we do control T for the toolbox, we could just sort of see uh, again. We can check on something we didn't talk about in the in the. In the moving boat method was thresholds. Okay, um, minimum beam SNR. So the instrument we we have it uh, accept data down to one decibel. Okay, if we wanted it to sort of be a bit, sort of say, actually I don't like data at one decibel. Oh, let's just down to let's just put it in at. Um, Sixteen. 
you will increase the total issue. Right now, the SNL is one, right? No, yeah, but the reason that increased was that we were we were extrapolating more. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it wasn't because the change in the SNR. Oh, okay, okay. It was the 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 data that we were actually using. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here I'm just looking at SNR. It's uh, you can just see there's just a little band of brighter green at the very top. Mm. That. So that's possibly just a little bit more noise coming out from the instrument. Cell screening I've turned off, we can now see all the way down to the bed and not just the bits that we... But I would always sort of... I have that bug now. It's a bug, but it's a bug I actually quite like. <laughs> if, I, if I close this down, I will. So if I use the roofs, so here the bit that we don't use, we put it in white. Okay. And previously, before I just took that, click that tail screening in the stationary software, that too was all shown as white or black. I can't remember what it was. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the bit that we're not using. This is the the data below here is what is what we're not using. Okay. Anything below this white line, we're not using. This is the bed. Okay, so it's just showing that. Once that below, the white line below the white line is extrapolation. Okay, so if I click on this one, you see the extrapolation is occurring from around about 37 centimeters deep. Take that across here. And then that back <coughs> to the same point here. And in this one, we go much closer to the bed, to within okay. myself of the bed. Any, anything else on, the, on here? The exports are the same to MATLAB and to, uh, to ASCII. The um, track reference it seems strange having track reference in there when you're uh, not stationary. If you base it on system, okay, it is purely just using the uh, your your location. If you put it on bottom track, it actually sort of will average a little bit of that out if there's a if there's a lot of movement on there as well. Okay, for its for its system, for its position. Uh, the default is using system. Before you started. No, default is your system. System, yeah. Software. Okay. Um Yeah, I I'll just any questions at all about anything? Anything. Anything. <laughs> yeah. Why are my football team so good? <laughs> Anything. I I found I'm trying to look for like every bit Rasby is a graph and I have found a Rasby one is a minus Rasby. It's a minus Rasby here. You can check it. So in one. Yeah, in here you saw the same. Yep. Okay. 
because we should be using speed. Okay. Okay. Speed is the uh, so if we go for velocity, we're looking at from each speed. Okay. And uh, we have upstream, downstream. Yeah, so speed one is facing downstream, right? And if we go to beam three, it should be the opposite one. Okay, any more questions? Instrument will work down to one decibel. 
of SNR. Okay? So anything above one decibel, decibel is good news for this. So here we see that it started out at 60 decibels and after it got down to about 3.7 meters, uh, we were getting down to around about uh, 30, 30 decibels. Gets, so we could have hit the bottom and get too strong. Okay. Uh, yeah. Like. yeah, so that's this is the signal coming back off the particles in the water. Because it's in a hard bed here, and I know it's a hard bed because of the shape of this plot, it's really sharp. So that's a, probably a concrete bed or something like that that this is on. Um, no, that's a good point. I haven't got one on. If it's, if it's a, a softer, muddy bottom, it's sort of more rounded. Okay, if you uh, you see here, sort of you know the vegetation, it's that's much softer. Okay, so that gives more of a rounded uh, reflection back on it. Okay, so any time we hit a hard object, at, as we're going down deeper in depth, we will get a peak beam ray. So that, so we plot that for each of the beams that are actually being they're actually firing. Okay. So here we're using the 3 megahertz incoherent, and it's in an incoherent processing way. Uh, a nice gentle defined here, 3 megahertz in high definition. Okay, so here we're only sort of doing the cells by 10 centimeter cells. This is going to be 2 centimeter cells. Each beam, as I say, being plotted. In this case, we have at about 1.1 meters, beam number four is hitting the bed, or something. If we go to today's data, okay, so here we are, the start edge. And we see uh, beam number two sort of hitting at around about what point, point four five? More shallow. More shallow. So we took a four beam average. We changed the depth of the beam two. I, I guess the beam two hit the rule. Okay. So yep, it's exactly that. Four beams. So on the we're at the edge. This one beam that's pointing to the edge is hitting the wall. The other ones are measured at depth. The other one, see that on beam number three, mm -hmm. it's all it's hitting a little bit higher up than the other two. Normally you would expect this one to be shallower. Hopefully these two are the same. Okay, and this one goes in a trapezoidal trap goes even deeper. Okay? Can you change to the station? Yep. Okay, can you uh, pick the first? Uh, station. Yep. Yeah, that one. And you see the, the SNR pin four. Pin four, yeah. It's, 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 the, the, it's not, not the, exactly the same. Is that what no, you're I mean, uh, the beam four. Oh, beam four is here. There's, there's two things about beam four. Yeah. So here, that's where it's hitting the, Hit the wall. Hitting the wall. Okay, then you, you click the last uh, station. The last station? Beam okay. two. Beam two. Yeah. Okay. So, so one and three. Oh, so opposite each other. Facing downstream, right? Yep. So we measure from the left hand side to right hand side. So B two is supposed to be. Uh, um, it's yeah. It's orientation is uh, AD clockwise. Yes, it's right. Right. Yep. Okay. Okay. What we see with beam four, we're actually seeing beam four hit something. Then uh, that's the one opposite to two. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, two and four. Two and four opposite. One and three. But. That beam four has probably hit a rock. Uh, it's a, bit rock. a rock, maybe a rock. Okay. Can you go back to like that. station one? Station one. Okay. Station one shows only beam four has a pit. Yes. In the middle of the, the depth. Yes. The other three, no uh, skeleton. Yep. Uh, so it doesn't hit the rock bed. Um, can I, I say that? I'm maybe it's 
trying to cheat, I'm trying to trick it. What it, all it's done is it's detected where the, and it's just not, it's not using the data beyond. There will have been a peak that is there, there but the instrument has just sort of said, okay, I'm not cheating, I know where that is, and I'm only going to plot the data that is relevant. Okay. Um, yeah, it's, it's just the way they, um, the program has decided to, to plot the data in station. It's not, it's not quite as important as it is for the, for the moving boat method. Okay. Okay. Sorry, signal noise ratio is as important, but our evaluation of it is not quite so important. Um, there was, if we just, if we look at the data from here,
London. And uh, he just happens to be coming to Asia. He's, on Saturday, he goes to Tokyo uh -huh. for an ISO meeting, a uh, standards meeting on uh, hydrology. So he's on the committee there. So that's why he's in Asia. So it's very special that he's here. So for any support questions, you should first go to Smart Tech. Okay. And Smart Tech, they will handle first. Okay. If they don't know the company, okay. and then I, I will find help to solve okay. the problem. So that's, that's the best way for support. That, that, but it's very special for him to be. But, um, yeah. So normally he handles Europe and the Middle East and okay. Africa. I don't want to get in trouble with food. Oh, okay, that email address. Um, is that No, something. Well, if you're, if you're being, if we're being really correct, it's only, but this one is also available. Yeah. I don't know what it is. It does, it goes to the site. It does? Yeah. How does it even know you're going to But it's got jewels. Oh, you're right. I'm it's sorry. Okay, so it's Soltech support. Yeah, you're right. This one here. Okay. Just, just sorry, Tom. Okay. I don't know where that one was. So, <laughs> no, I mean, it's not like top information. Yeah, it's filters. Yeah, I don't know where that one is. It's something support to dial in. Yeah, anyhow, yeah, let's do that. Let's do the first one. It gets to San Diego. Oh, I don't want it to go to like Illinois or some other part of the It's a big company. And we are trying to model all the good and take a photo. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. 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 Yeah.